Uh, let's also welcome in our guest in this 9 o'clock hour to begin it. It is uh, Steve Williams, who is uh, the mayor of the city of Huntington and a candidate for governor in the state of West Virginia. Good morning, Steve. How are you? I'm doing well, Rob. Hi, Admiral, and hi, Bill. Good morning, morning. Steve. Glad to, be back with, glad to be back with you all. I'm glad that uh, the rains have uh, separated themselves from you, too. We needed it, man. Yeah, yeah we, we had to have it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you'd like it in more steady streams rather than in just big old gushers, right? I would have been a lot happier not having seven inches all in 24 hours at my house. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we we had, uh, I think it was like four years ago, we had uh, uh, seven inches of rain in a 30-minute period. And, oh, good Lord. Wow, um, that's a lot of rain. Uh, the students had come in to, to Marshall and, they were waiting around in in the streets. No matter what you do, uh, there's there's no stormwater system that's able to take that in uh, that that quickly. Yeah. But it was uh, it was it, it was pretty a uh, pretty extreme. Yeah, real extreme. Yeah, we were so dry and the soil uh, soaked it up so quick. There were a few isolated yeah. instances where there were some uh, inconveniences, uh, but we. It was not really bad. I we, think we did we have several there. roads closed for high water, but otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Scrabble road not being one of those. Scrabble road not being one of those. Steve, uh, by the way, I've had the pleasure of experiencing this. It's uh, it's one, I think, if, if you're a sports fan, it's something you have to do, and and that is be around Huntington when Marshall has a home game on a Saturday. It, uh, it, it's, it's just it, something. It's really fun. Um, you know, this time of year, uh, since I was a little boy, this was the magical time of year um, um even even now i'm 68 years old I've, and the, on august 1st when uh, you would start to report for high school uh, practice i was even thinking just this past august 1st i, mean, I was thinking 51 years ago i was uh, reporting for my very last um two a days in in high school then when i went on to and played at Marshall. It's just something that just uh, sticks with you. But it is a uh, uh, Marshall and WVU. I mean, it's it's an event for for both. It's quite interesting at Marshall because of the connection with the crash and yep. uh, everything emanates from from that in 1970. And uh, um, when I moved to Huntington, it was just a couple of years a after the crash. But it's something I may have. I'm not sure if I've told you this. I have a picture of the team that was killed in the crash uh, behind my desk in my office, no. and it's uh, have it there as a reminder that everything that I am and everything that I have become uh, tragically came from that that crash. But uh, at the same time, what you end up learning. And what this town has, has learned is that uh, we never give up, um, never, ever give up. And uh, it's uh, football Football season is a special time of year. Well, t tell me about uh, that time uh, after the plane crash. I mean, watching We Are Marshall is hard to get through without choking up in your throat and getting uh, tears in your eyes uh, at times during that movie. But tell me about being there right in the center of it uh, shortly thereafter, Stephen, what that well, was like. I, I, my family moved to Huntington in 1972, two years after after the crash. Um, my dad had coached down at Concord, um, and uh, he quit coaching in 1969. And uh, uh, so we were watching, my brother and I were watching the Blue, Bluefield television station, and they came on saying that there was a, a crash in Huntington and that uh, it appears to be no survivors the interest in Bluefield was is they had a player, a wide receiver named Dennis Blevins, and I had idolized him because uh, I would see him play football, I'd see him play basketball, and then running track. My dad also coached track at, at Concord as well, and I remember seeing Denny Blevins running. Uh, he was a 400, 440 now the 400 meters, 440-yard uh, dash uh, state uh, uh, state champion and also ran the uh, 
ran the shuttle hurdle relay. Uh, he was just he could just do everything. But uh, I remember seeing that night and had no obviously no idea that two years later I'd be living in in Huntington. When I moved to to Huntington and went to Huntington High, several of my classmates' uh, parents were killed in in the crash. And uh, um, you know, you're 16 years old. Life just continues on, and then didn't realize the significance of those uh, children, um, those classmates that were uh, orphaned as a result of it. Some lost dads, and uh, some lost both parents. Um, to this day, I still go up. Spring Hill Cemetery, where the uh, uh, where the monument for those that were that were killed, um, but there was uh, th- th- there for a number of years, even through the years that I played at Marshall, there was uh, there was a sadness, and um, and particularly when I was playing at, at Marshall, we started from scratch. The team that was uh, depicted in the movie. As uh, the incoming freshmen were seniors when I came in as, as a freshman, and I still idolize uh, the, those guys. And uh, uh, what we didn't have is you, you didn't have that many players that you were able to to rely upon, who were able to have a few years of uh, interning, so to speak, as being second and third stringer, stringers and learning uh, the game. Uh, they were immediately thrown in, and uh, oh my gosh, uh, some of the games were awful. My my junior year, uh, we 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 lost more games. We lost more games, or actually, they now they win more games in one season than we did the entire four years that I, that I was playing. And uh, uh, but we had some special moments. Uh, Miami University in Miami, Ohio, came in to play us. Interestingly, the date now, September 11th, 1976, came in to play us, and they had just beat the University of North Carolina, and we beat them. Um, and I think they were ranked like number 17 in in the country or something, and <laughs> everybody was shocked, shocked to to death. Um, but now. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, when Marshall started uh, playing one double A and then uh, started going to the playoffs, and uh, they were playing Appalachian State down in Boone uh, for the semifinals to go to the finals of the NCAA one double A championship, uh, they beat Appalachian State, and now they're going to the national championship. And as I was walking out of the stadium, there were three other guys who I had played with, and we were just stood there. And as I recall, not a word was said among us. We were there just holding each other as as a group with tears in our eyes and realized, all right, now we know that there was a purpose behind what we did and what we went through those years. And it's something that we hold on to to this day. You come into my office, as I said, you have that one picture of the team, but I've got young thundering herd stuff all over mm-hmm. all over the, the office. Well, that's a great retelling of that uh, time of your life, Steve. Thank you for uh, letting our audience know about that. And I learned some new things about you this morning myself. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, very moving. It's a special time, and uh, anybody that – and, Rob, I think you coach, right? Or, I, I or, do, or yes. Used to. Still do. Yeah. And, uh, um, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest compliment you could ever give somebody is uh, is calling them coach. Um, I've got a uh, – I have a member of city council who was a former sheriff and a county commissioner, and I still call him Coach Bailey. I played against him in high school in, in football and in basketball. Uh, the highest – the highest the title, as I can see, that you can place on anybody is coach. Your story has brought out comments on our Facebook page. Mike Pavlik said, I was a sophomore at Marshall in 1970, lived in a dorm with several football players. Uh, A.R. Emmert posted that uh, Brian Ned Burks, a 71 graduate well, of Marshall. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Ned, Ned was the senior when I was a, a freshman. And that man, 
Uh, I love him to, to, to this day. I'd had a freshman game where we were playing the University of Kentucky on, on the freshman game, and I had a real good game, but I got to live in daylight beat out of me by those guys. I mean, they were SEC players, and it was just – and uh, I I was sitting outside the student center the day after the game. I was sore. I was down. We had gotten beat like a drum. Um and Ned just came over and just sat down with me, and there was the maturity that he had, and still has, but but now at our age we'd hope to be mature. But he had a maturity at that age where he just came over and just sat down and said, "How you doing?" And he let me just talk a little bit. I said, "I'm just so disappointed." And he said, "You had a great game. Don't let this get you down. Don't let that define you. You had a great game." And just. Uh, here I am all these years later. Well, that would have been 50 years ago. It was yeah. in the in the fall of 1974. And uh, uh, some of the players that we were playing against at the University of Kentucky ended up uh, in the NFL. And <laughs> he's like, uh, I had a real good game, but, man, uh, their defensive tackles were able – I ran a 4-6-40, and they were running right along the side of me and taking me down. It was <laughs> – it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, there there are some people who are just born to play the game, Steve, and the rest of us have to work at it. <laughs> you know, I had dropped back to pass once, and then uh, came out of the came out of the pocket and went running to the sidelines. And I was thought, all right, I'm going to outrun this defensive tackle, and I'm just and I'm just starting to cut up. And he just reached out with his right end, <laughs> grabbed my jersey, and just didn't. Did, 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 Pulled me down, just threw me down. <laughs> it was all in one, in one fell swoop. And and Art Stills was his, Art Stills was his name, and he played defensive tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> oh man, well, he, yeah. that's cool. Now, if you were running a four six back in seventy four, dude, you were you were bringing it. That's pretty good speed. Uh, I, I I was a I was a good athlete. Um, I played every position there was because I just wanted to be on the field. Mm -hmm. My, I came as a quarterback, uh, as I indicated in the freshman games, I was playing a quarterback, uh, but they moved me to wide receiver late in the season. We had several, they, they had several injuries and, uh, I would just jump in because they needed somebody to run around and I'd jump in and all of a sudden I was beating the, uh, uh, the starters in the in the defensive secondary, and uh, Coach Lingo called me in and said, uh, "I've seen you out there, and, and just the audacity of an 18 year old." He said, "I've seen you out there," and I said, "Well, that's why I was doing it so you would know." <laughs> <laughs> and, and he had this little felt board where the name where the the. Uh, uh, where the lineups were and the depth chart, and uh, he took took my pen out and he moved it over to a wide receiver and said, "I need you to go here." So I got to, I got to play and start the last three games of my freshman year, but I played quarterback, wide receiver. The next year, I played tight end and wing back, and uh, I just wanted in I just wanted in the game. And by my junior year, I was in. Uh, two two games. I played all four positions in in each game. Just um, my dad, as I said, had been a coach, so I had the I had the knowledge of the game. You know, again, when we played Miami that year, that uh, that we we beat them. I had hurt my back the the week before and was in treatment all week. And in the morning of the game, I was in a whirlpool and in the pool swimming, didn't think that we were going to play. And all of a sudden my, my back was, was loose. And then I was able to get in, into the, get into the game. And it's just, uh, uh, all I wanted to do was just be in the game. And, and uh, it, it was pretty special. It's good to be young, man. How how is how have those experiences translated to your career in politics, Steve? You know what's amazing, and uh, uh, you always hear coaches say to to uh, their young athletes is that this is going to teach you the lessons of life, 
and what is absolutely amazing is that uh, one, it well, there are a couple of analogies. Um, one thing that you you learn is don't think, just react. Um, and uh, what when I would be watching films, we'd see that there were some some trends that uh, you would see that were were going on, and and in the when you were on the field, whether it be football, basketball, sometimes you would see a seam that would just open up for just a moment, and uh, you knew I've got to take it right now. And if you had if you had the ability, you were able to take it immediately. If you didn't have the ability, it would it would collapse. But if you had the experience, you had the the ability, you had the confidence to to take it. It was amazing how. When you'd watch it on film, you'd say, there's nothing there, but you saw you saw the scene. Well, it's the same thing that I found while being mayor, that there's sometimes where everything seems to be going wrong around you, and you see an opportunity, and there's a scene, and you don't hesitate. You take it and go with it, and uh, so many times it appears that you're making something out, out of nothing. Um I was having some labor issues with uh, uh, with police and fire. We were having a horrible time with our, our budget, and I had to lay some people off and had to make those decisions once again as we were trying to figure out what to do. Came in with a recommendation, and the one thing that I've learned is I've, I I will make I'll make an instant, instinctive uh, d decision. Well, I made a decision. We're doing this. And they were saying, are you sure? And I said, it's done. And as far as I was concerned, it was over with. Well, I came in uh, to my office, and uh, an attorney who is now the managing partner uh, to Steptoe and, and, and Johnson um, came in, and he was telling me about uh, um, there was a general that uh, – um, uh, that was saying, talking about a a, a victory in at, at Waterloo, and they said uh, uh, the vic the the victory at Waterloo was born on the fields of Eton, and Eton it was the school where most of the young uh, gentry and the young officers uh, got their education, but they got. Uh, that said that the that the lessons were learned on the field to beat and, and immediately it clicked. I was in the eighth grade, <laughs> playing quarterback for the ninth grade team. My coach was one of my dad's former quarterbacks, and I went to drop back to pass, and I was getting hit every play. We were playing Central Junior High School from Bluefield, and they were just pounding me. Every time I dropped back, I would end up on my back. So I went to do a play action, went to throw, and I threw off of my back leg to to avoid the hit, and the ball went sailing out of bounds. It was an out pattern. The ball went sailing out of, out of bounds, and my coach immediately took me out of the game. He said, Williams, stand right here. Stand right here. He, and he looked at me and he said, if you can't drop back into the pocket, step into your throw and follow through and take the hit, then you'll just watch the game from right here. And immediately as I'm sitting in my office thinking of this, and I thought, all right, Steve, if you, if you can't make the decision, do what's necessary, stand tall and make, make, the, make the decision and take the hit, then you have no business being mayor and you might as well go on and leave. And it's just, those are the lessons that you learn. I was, I was 13 years old. I was 45 years later. I was 58 at that at, at, at that time. But I'm still drawing on something that from those days of, of being able to play. And uh, uh, as I as I have said, those things make me the man who I am today. About three minutes left here, Bill or Bill. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I've told you a lot about state, <laughs> about state government, haven't I? I know, yeah. Those are good stories, <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, but but the race for governor—that's what a lot of us are curious about now. Uh, I was uh, uh, 
kind of expecting you to be up here last week for the youth fair, and I think I may have made some statement that. Uh, you Are you taking advantage of events such as the county youth fairs, county's uh, events to get out and let you get yourself better known? You're very yeah. well known in the Huntington area, less well so in the eastern panhandle. Well, I've, I've been traveling all around the state. The reason there's two, two things that were going on last week why I couldn't make it to the youth fair. There is a uh, Notre Dame was hosting a national summit on the opioid settlement money, and I was asked to be one of the uh, keynote speakers that day. Um, um, we had uh, uh, Jonathan Board, who is the uh, one of the, the the director of the West Virginia First Foundation. He was up there, and uh, but I was one of the featured speakers uh, dur- during that time. And then when I came back immediately. Um, from that and from South Bend, I uh, had uh, the West Virginia Municipal League annual meeting was going on in in Huntington, and I was the host. So that's what took me out of preventing me from being able to go anywhere in, in that regard. But uh, on uh, Thursday, I'm going to be at the State Fair, and uh, certainly what I what I found is that as I am walking around uh, talking with folks. Um, and I, I was that active in 4-H as I was growing up, and I loved being able to go into uh, where the, the 4-H exhibits are and everything, be able to see the kids with their uh, livestock and such, and start talking to them, and then their their parents and 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 others. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a storyteller, and I'm, and they're, they're storytellers. I mean, they're great interactions, and. Uh, um, we're we're doing that more and more, and certainly this fall is going to be packed on Friday nights and uh, uh, throughout the week. But if I have that opportunity, um, it's it's pretty special. That's the wonderful thing about uh, running in a statewide election is that you have the opportunity to be able just to see the wonder of uh, the West Virginians and uh, the beauty of our state. Well, we certainly hope we'll see you uh, uh, up here in the Eastern Panhandle. It's uh, well, I've uh, been up around eight or nine times, um, and uh, I, what I'm realizing is I need to do, and I have just have never been much of this, but I've got to take advantage of social media and let people know. Boy, it was fun being in Martinsburg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was in uh, the uh, uh, Christmas parade the uh, last last year in Inwood and uh, Steve I got uh, I got to jump in because we're just about out of time but uh, anytime you're around let us know in advance we'll get you a slot on the program I sir. will I'm, I'm coming up again within the next week or so but I'll I'll let you know in advance yeah please so give us a yell some time together thank Sounds you Steve great. thanks Steve sorry for going on and on sorry buddy these are I'm good stories have a good day <laughs> okay thanks guys